Welcome to this week's Movie Math, where it appears Hollywood had a serious case of the beer goggles last weekend. Yes, sadly, in the harsh light of the non-Valentine's Day box office, Fifty Shades of Grey didn't look quite as hot as it did last weekend, delighting those who feel the flick is a danger to society. But as for fans, they were comforted by a few silver linings. So, how bad was it? Well, while Fifty Shades of Grey was able to hold onto the top spot, it plummeted over 70% in just its second weekend. That is obviously very bad. Yet here's that first silver lining. The Fault in Our Stars also fell 70% in its second weekend, which might just mean these femme-skewing book adaptations are simply extremely front-loaded. And when it comes to being front-loaded, Fifty Shades is very well endowed. In just a little over a week, it has surpassed 400 million worldwide. Yowza! Not bad for a movie that costs just 40 million to make. And yes, while its stateside numbers are very, very solid, this is yet another Hollywood movie doing most of its business overseas, where it fell just a little under 60% and also held on to the number one spot in most countries. But whether you're rooting for Fifty Shades of Grey or against it, one thing that's now crystal clear is that this is a franchise whose entries need to open on Valentine's Day weekend. Universal has already set Fifty Shades Darker for 2016, and luckily Valentine's Day falls on a Sunday next year, where it will also be another holiday weekend with President's Day again. But there have already been headlines that E.L. James is insisting on scripting the sequel herself and is willing to hold up the production to get her way, something her contract actually gives her the power to do. Can Universal use these numbers to persuade her to back down or compromise? Or will these numbers scare Universal into letting her have her way? What would you advise the studio and E.L. James to do? And while you're giving out advice, Fox could also surely use some when it comes to Kingsman The Secret Service. While the Matthew Vaughn and Mark Miller spy flick opened better than their first outing, Kick-Ass, it fell the same 50% in its second weekend. Thankfully, though, it's doing very well overseas, shockingly well in South Korea, where in just two weeks it's outperformed every single James Bond movie ever made. Yet Vaughn himself has said that Kingsman needs to sell tickets in America to earn a sequel. If Kingsman does get a sequel, let's hope we don't have to wait three years like we did with Kick-Ass. Although, if those Taron Edgerton as young Han Solo rumors turn out to be true, Fox will have no choice but to get in line behind Disney. Then in third place, it was another holdover with Sponge Out of Water. Paramount Animation is off to a great start with their inaugural entry as the sequel, 11 years after the first movie, has already surpassed the 2004 flick's entire gross both domestically and overseas. It's no Lego movie, sure, but it is a Hotel Transylvania, not to mention way better than recent DreamWorks animation entries Penguins of Madagascar, Mr. Peabody and Sherman Turbo, and Rise of the Guardians. Hang on, DreamWorks, hang on. And now here come the new releases for the weekend, trickling in at the halfway point. McFarland USA barely topped the group, debuting in fourth place with around 11 million. That's about what was expected considering Kevin Costner's track record as of late. He really should consider a return to TV at this point, as the silver screen just isn't working out. Then the Duff actually overperformed, debuting in fifth place. That's pretty solid for a film featuring TV talent, yet it would have been nice to see it get a little closer to the debuts of modern teen classics Easy A and Mean Girls. Now the question becomes what effect this might have on the careers of Mae Whitman and Robbie Amell. I'm rooting for them, are you? Finally, in seventh place, we find Hot Tub Time Machine 2, where it seems the water has almost run out of this party. This is just about a third of the debut of the first flick, where it seems that what was left of John Cusack's star power was all that was holding this concept together. If there really is a hot tub time machine, everyone in this movie needs to get in it and stop the sequel from happening. Maybe they want to go meta and make that the concept of the third film? Don't worry, I'm joking, this franchise is dead. As for this coming weekend, Focus is expected to take the number one spot, although with one of the lowest debuts of Will Smith's career. Seriously, lower than After Earth. Then, horror producer extraordinaire Jason Blum is going to get a harsh wake-up call after attending the Oscars. He also produced Whiplash, as The Lazarus Effect is expected to compete with Dark Skies as his lowest debut of all time. 
And that's the weekend box office. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.